I lived in the days of horses before cars, gas before electricity, trains and before airplanes, walking on the moon. I was the giggler in the family. I'd go off at anything and couldn't stop laughing. And we went to this photographer and he was an old man with the long hair and he would have those cameras that you put over your head, you know? It took forever to get the picture because every time he put it over his head, we couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> this is this house. I was 10 when we moved in here. Didn't leave till I got married. The children were all free to come to everybody's house. There was no fear of children being out in those days. Almost everybody knew each other. And you'd go to friends' homes. They'd come to your home. It's a lot of home entertaining. Well, my father had a rule that we must sit down to dinner as an entire family. Seven of us sat down to dinner every night. Having dinner together is a very important part of life. Aunt Clara used to play the piano, and we'd all gather around the piano and sing. Very happy, wonderful childhood. Television took care of all that. <laughs> TV did change people's lives. You began eating in front of the TV. My youth was in the Depression days. That's when dating was when a boy would call a girl on the telephone <laughs> and ask for a date for a certain night. Most of the dates were tobogganing or skating, then come home to one of our homes and have hot chocolate and cookies. And then in the summer it would be canoeing, swimming, going to the beach. I feel bad for the young girls of today. I feel they have so many pressures that never existed in my day at all. It was a very innocent age. I didn't kiss much, very much. I was not one of the huggable girls. Romance in those days didn't go much farther than kissing. So you kissed before you were married? Kissed <laughs> before we were married. Uh -huh. And as I say, today they're afraid of AIDS. In my day, if a boy had dandruff, I didn't go out with him. Silly. As soon as I graduated high school, I couldn't wait to get a job. And I got a job working downtown right on 7th and Nicollet. So exciting. When you went out for your lunch hour, you got dressed to the hilt. Always hats, gloves, furs. A high school friend of mine and myself decided we'd like to open a little dress shop. And we found a little shop on Hennepin Lake. It was called the Mary Esther Shop because her name was Esther and my sister Mary. It was a little electrical shop and my father and my big brothers came and painted everything pink. And we didn't have money, but there were local manufacturers of clothes. And we went to them and they thought it was awfully cute of us to be doing that. So they gave us everything on consignment. We had a lot of fun with it for a year, and my friend, my partner who was married, became pregnant, and I got married, so that was the end of the Mary Esther shop. But it served its purpose. We had a lot of fun. I always love at first sight, definitely.
he traveled, he was a radio announcer, he'd keep in touch with me, call me, call me all the time. So we had that kind of a relationship for five years and he came in to ask my father for my hand. Ned had nothing to offer, <laughs> just himself and his love. So Grandpa's answer to him was, Gusty, that was my mother's name, get me the shovel. She brought him a shovel and he went out and he snowed shovel for quite a while and then came in and told Ned okay. <laughs> and then we left to go to California. I turned to say goodbye to everybody. When I turned to my mother and father, I burst into tears and I said, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'll probably never see them again. <laughs> Quite an awakening, but then I went. Brave girl that I was. We had almost five enchanting years in Los Angeles. But when the war broke out, there was nothing I wanted more than to get back with my family. And Ned agreed to do it. We came back and lived with Grandma and Grandpa. Before that, they had all kinds of help, men taking care of the yard, maids. All that was gone when war was declared. Everybody either went to war or got jobs. Before the war, women, their idea was to get married, have children, have a family, and that was it. And that changed a great deal during the war, when the girls had to go to work and found they loved it and loved earning money. Girls that worked during World War II, we all called Rosie the Riveter. And those girls were the beginning of the change. Things changed even the way they dressed. They got into pants for the first time. They were their own apartments. If their husbands were in the army, they'd get a smaller place for themselves to stay at. And they became a much more independent life. My sister Claire was ahead of her time a little, I think, because she would say, why are the girls doing the ironing? Why, should, why are we ironing the boys' shirts? And I looked at her like, she's crazy, because I was thrilled to do it. I was very happy to be married and run a house. And, and most of my friends did not work. Also, none of us had cars. The family had a car. And then after the war, everybody, women started to drive and got more interested in the outer world and in earning a living. And uh, things did change then, a big change. To me, my religion is family. We laughed a lot together. And uh, in my estimation, it's a very important part of life. That's my wisdom. That's my religion. Um, that's what I wish for all of you.